So George R. R. Martin just posted some scathing remarks about HBO and House of the Dragon. Not only does he tell us what he hates about what they did to his work, he goes out of his way to spoil major events for the upcoming season. Now there has been a long debate between fans and studios when it comes to the adaptation of books. But George R. R. Martin's statements prove that it turns out the fans aren't so crazy or toxic after all. When it comes to fans, it is a fan's right mm -hmm. to have whatever opinion they want to have. And people are going to be upset because, especially when it, you're talking about books or games, because you're never going to be the exact person who they had in their head or who they played on Witcher 3, for example. I don't necessarily consider that toxic. I just consider that passionate. Mm -hmm. From Variety, George R.R. Martin calls out House of the Dragon changes and warns there are more toxic tweaks to come based on what's being contemplated for seasons three and four. So from this, he's actually calling the changes toxic. These statements are actually pretty crazy. I, George R.R. Martin's been a company guy. He didn't even lose his shit when Dan and Dave ruined the last couple seasons of Game of Thrones. Which would have been completely warranted, by the way. And throughout the writer's strike, he was like super supportive of everything that was going on with the writers. But yeah, just a little while ago, he had that initial statement that let you knew he was pissed, where he pretty much called Hollywood screenwriters hacks that only leech off of other people's work. And this is becoming like a more common sentiment, because George Lucas said pretty much the same thing when the Acolyte came. Exactly. So it seems, you guys, that all the Georges are just getting screwed over. <laughs> Martin's biggest critique laid out in a since-deleted Wednesday blog post titled Beware the Butterflies was around differences between the blood and cheese plotline in the House of the Dragon season 2 premiere, which features the death of a child character and the story as is told in Fire and Blood. It is hard when you're watching House of the Dragon because on its own, it's actually really well made. It's a very good show. But when you have an adaptation, you always have to hold it up against what it came from. And as the season went on, the quality was there, but the tone and the entire narrative started to shift away. Exactly. Because even the title of the blog post, Beware the Butterflies, it's so ominous. And even when we read this blog post, the underlying sentiment is there's much more to come. This is just the tip of the iceberg. But I do find it odd that he deleted it. Probably was made to. You think? Yeah, he's under contract with HBO. And we have evidence that HBO is trying to do damage control. Exactly, because it goes on to say, an HBO spokesperson responded to Martin's complaints Wednesday with the following statement obtained by Variety. There are few greater fans of George R. R. Martin and his book, Fire and Blood, than the creative team on House of the Dragon, both in production and at HBO. Yeah, when you're having to explain how you're a really big fan of the work, that's usually signs that something's not right. Like, especially because fans have become very attuned to the more screenwriters and a production company tells you how much they love the work, the more they're deviating from the work. Exactly. And goes on to say, commonly when adapting a book for the screen with its own format and limitations, the showrunner ultimately is required to make difficult choices about the characters and stories that the audience will follow. We believe that Ryan Condell and his team have done an extraordinary job and the millions of fans the series have amassed over the first two seasons will continue to enjoy it. See, but that's exactly the problem. <laughs> like George R. R. Martin's worked with HBO before. He did it with Game of Thrones. He's very aware that things are going to be different, but obviously what they have planned, he wants to separate his work from, which is very interesting because obviously the last couple of seasons of Game of Thrones was such a departure from what fans of the books were expecting. And I think that's what the main focus is here. He's making it very clear that he's still going to work with him, but he doesn't agree with the direction it's going. So anything yeah. that's going on right now, he's like, do not put that on me. I didn't sign off on it. I actually argued with the screenwriters about the choices that were made. Yeah. And I don't agree with this. No, it directly seems like he's petitioning the fans. Yes. Which again, there seems to be a massive shift in just the relationship between the creatives and writers that make these great works and then the screenwriters and studios that adapt them. Because for the longest time, fans were like, hey, this doesn't live up. Why are you doing these things? And we were told, no, you're you're making mountains out of molehills or you're just impossible to please. Yep. Now you have the actual writer saying, no, 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 this is this is pretty messed up. Like, and this guys, actually changes the connotations of the story later yeah. on, and it actually will influence and change the meaning of things yeah. for the future to come. And that's kind of the sentiment from his whole blog post is they're making changes that have long sweeping narrative changes to the story he's trying to tell. Exactly. And I think that's why he's so upset, because there are changes to make things more concise or fit onto screen, but he's alluding to the fact that you're actually changing the story. 
and the and, meaning behind it. And if you've read the book, if you've read Fire and Blood, I think we all felt that in the last episode. Again, the show is good, but there was a decided shift from a story about how the warring between these two sides of the family irreparably damaged the kingdom to trying to give us a good versus bad, a right versus wrong, and to well, make Rhaenyra seem justified. Yes, they wanted you, know? you to pick a side yeah. and show you who was actually like in in the right or had the reasoning yeah. behind what they were doing. And they tried to use the prophecy to bolster that we're supposed to feel that Rhaenyra is not only justified, mm -hmm. but that she is almost guided in her decisions. And again, that is not part of the narrative yeah, of like the book. Yeah, like it's predestined. Like it's pre yeah, like it's predestined in that if she doesn't do it, it puts the kingdom in peril. The whole idea is that the warring of people inherently puts the kingdom in peril. That's the point of a song of ice and fire. While kings and people are paying the game of thrones, the little people are suffering and we're not looking at the bigger threat, which is the others. Exactly. But yeah, and this I feel like was the most scathing comment. He said, I do not look forward to other posts I need to write about everything that's gone wrong with House of the Dragon in all caps. But I need to do that too. And I will just not today though. So yeah, more to come. And I think it really goes to show that on one hand, they wanted to, again, twist it just enough to make it theirs. And I do think as a standalone show, it is good. Mm -hmm. But it when they started trying to include the prophecy, I'm like, oh, they're trying to mitigate the damage they did with the last couple of seasons of Game of Thrones where they just ignored all the prophecy stuff. And so from that comment, you guys, there's obviously more to come. And what he's explicitly saying is that it is a much bigger deal than just this initial post. There's other things that are major issues that will influence the future of the show. Now, of course, to play devil's advocate, there will be people who say that George R. R. Martin's very behind with Winds of Winter, and maybe this is a little bit of a distraction. Um, maybe a little bit. <laughs> but I think it's more about there's a understanding now that this adapting things for this audience that studios are convinced exist, but just doesn't. The need to not live up to like the actual story, the lore. Yeah. And I feel like they're more yeah. going for the general fantasy audience. Yeah, like it's okay to let down the hardcore fans of the books or of the original lore mm -hmm. because they don't really matter. In actual fact, they're the main ones that matter because if you saw it with Game of Thrones, you'll know that those were the people that were getting all of their friends to make that into this massively successful TV show. Yeah, exactly. And HBO did admit that season two of House of the Dragon actually had less viewers than season one. So they already were starting to lose fans along the way. I just think that more and more creatives are realizing, yeah, it's kind of like this deal with the devil. You want your stuff to get adapted. You want the money. So you agree to the adaptation, but you actually are risking hurting your legacy because it is a distraction from mm -hmm. your work. And once people have seen it on screen, they may not be receptive to what you do in your book. And so do you want your bold vision to be made into this simplistic thing because he does say that that simple is not better and there was a massive simplification in the latter part of this season and and we all saw it we all know what happened yeah. <laughs> i'm not going to get into all that yeah, yeah it's fine if it's your own work it's fine as a show and the weird thing is like it's still one of the best shows of the year yes but it is distinctly becoming more and more different. And with the things he leaks about the next season, the show sounds like it's going to deviate even more. And well, so I think that that's what some he, of yeah. its reasoning and the yeah. meaning behind some of the actions that are supposed to happen. So I think he's trying to get in front of the fact that he anticipates the next season to be a major letdown and he doesn't want to be affiliated with that. Yeah, or be responsible, like the scapegoat for the reason why it happened. So you guys, let us know in the comments what you think about these leaks and posts by George R.R. R. Martin, and we'll catch you guys in the comments. Bye.